In the 1950s, President Dwight Eisenhower announced that he was naming the first civilian director in the history of the CIA. His name was Alan Dulles, and Dulles had one order, eliminate communism. But under Dulles, the CIA morphed into Washington's most powerful agency, built up by a league of ruthless assassins, operating under the orders to protect capitalism from the Soviet menace. Dulles became power hungry. Just months into his term, Dulles green-lighted Operation PB Success, a coup to take out Guatemala's democratically elected leader, Jacobo Arbenz, and replace him with a military dictator. Why? To serve as a vanguard for corporate interests. You see, they needed to protect the profits of the United Fruit Company. They were under threat of having their land confiscated under the Arbanes administration. And the CIA has never shied away from government overthrow, from Iran to the Congo to South Vietnam. The CIA has never changed until recently when they began interfering in American elections. And when it happened, it was called a conspiracy theory. The biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my well, campaign, There's Leslie. no real evidence of that. Of course there is. No. It's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got I, caught. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes, and we can't put on things we can't no, verify. No, you won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied and, on my campaign. Well, we can't verify It's been totally that. verified. No. It's been, just go down and get the papers. They spied on my campaign. They got caught. Barack Obama said everything was done by the book. I guarantee that there is no political influence in any investigation conducted by the Justice Department or the FBI, not just in this case, but in any case. Now, Obama isn't the first politician to lie and won't be the last. Last night, we brought you a bombshell report from journalists Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi that allege Obama's CIA not only was involved in the Russia hoax, they started it. The story, as you mentioned, was that, oh, we were just informed by foreign intelligence about this. Our sources tell us a very different story, which is that this was initiated by the U.S. government. It came from within the U.S. government's intelligence community, including the CIA. According to this report, Obama's CIA director, John Brennan, asked our English-speaking allies to target the Trump campaign, handing these foreign intelligence agencies a target list of 26 Trump associates. These 26 Trump associates were to be bumped, meaning they would be approached by assets, bumped into, and these interactions and relationships would be reported to the FBI as suspicious. These were people the CIA considered easy marks, like George Papadopoulos, 20-year-old. Foreign spies didn't discover evidence of Trump-Russia collusion and turn it over to the feds. Foreign spies were assigned by Obama's CIA to create a false impression of collusion, to trigger an FBI counterintelligence investigation. Obama's CIA worked with Hillary's foreign agents in London to hatch the hoax, which led to the FBI investigation, the illegal wiretapping, the Mike Flynn sting, and then when Trump caught wind of it, the Comey firing. And then Comey leaks the memos, which triggered the Mueller investigation. Now, the Mueller investigation was designed to cover up for Obama and Hillary and tee up impeachment. It failed on impeachment, but the cover-up worked. Until now. New reporting by Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger revealed that House investigators had discovered the root causes, but their investigation and all of their documents were confined to secure rooms in Langley, and when Trump was leaving office in those hectic final days, he attempted to declassify this material, which started a battle between former CIA director Gina Haspel, the Department of Justice, and the National Archives. The report says someone may have taken this binder of material exposing the entire intelligence community out of Langley. And it may have been what the FBI was looking for when they raided Mar-a-Lago. Others say that's not true, but the point remains that the Obama-Biden White House, their CIA and FBI director, launched an illegal preemptive war against democracy, got caught, and have been covering it up for eight years. Schellenberger and Taibbi also say redacted FOIA documents suggest that Biden has been conspiring against Donald Trump with the intelligence community 
to prosecute the former president in federal court, which would be an impeachable offense. Matt Taibbi is the Racket News editor-in-chief and Griftopia author. So this is great reporting. It's, 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 it's hard to verify because, you know, we were told that this special counsel, Durham, was going to get to the bottom of it. Are you saying he missed this? We were told that the scope of the Durham investigation was limited um, to a few areas and that uh, he wasn't looking at this particular direction. Uh, the information that we have, the investigation that was conducted by the House Permanent Select Committee on Investigations, uh, of Intelligence, excuse me, um, what they found was a broad political espionage campaign, and there were two main conclusions that are at the center of our uh, reports. One is that at least 26 Trump aides and associates were improperly and without predication placed under surveillance in the election year of 2016. And the other one is that these same folks uh, cooked the intelligence uh, for the January 6, 2017 intelligence community assessment saying that Russia uh, interfered to, I'm sorry, conducted an influence campaign to help Donald Trump. Uh, it's a WMD style story. Uh, they suppressed dissenting opinions and created a false narrative. So there's a lot of debate over this binder. Is there a binder? What's in the binder? Is it redacted? Who has it? Where is it? Is that why they conducted the raid? What's going on with these materials? Well, it's a difficult story because we, we, we heard multiple versions of what the binder is, how many binders there are. We heard there are as many as three. Um, but we do know a couple of concrete things. We know that only a share of the HIPSI investigation ever got out. Of course, people are aware of the Nunes memo, uh, which led to the investigation of abuses of FISA. Uh, we also we know that there was a report done into the origins of that intelligence community assessment, which supposedly never left a vault on the grounds of Langley. That's like a 17 to 20 page report that was confirmed by multiple sources. Uh, apart from that, we were told there are uh, numerous other investigative materials that may or may not be these binders that stories are referring to. Uh, but we know that there's a lot of stuff that didn't get out, that there was <laughs> that there were thousands of hours of investigation and their conclusions have not yet been declassified. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, this would just be another reason why they want to do everything they can to prevent Donald Trump from returning to the White House, because he'll blow the lid off of that. He tried to, wasn't able to at the very end, but caught him most of the time. I am interested in your reporting that there is, I guess, heavily redacted FOIA documents that suggest that Joe Biden has been collaborating with the intelligence community to prosecute these federal cases against Donald Trump, and we'll see how that shakes out. Matt, great reporting uh, to you and, and, and Schellenberger. I suggest everybody go to your website, your Substack, and, and read it for yourself. Thanks again. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.